Hello viewers, 4DIYers here, back in the tutorial video for everyone. Now in this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to remove the window tint on your vehicle in Photoshop. Now this was a recent requested video by one of my viewers. Now with this process here, what I do find is that you have to have a vehicle with a lighter window tint in order for this to work. Unfortunately, the vehicles with a darker window tint, such as uh, something that was found on limos with a 5%, it doesn't work because you do need the interior to show through that window tint in order to make it look realistic. And another issue also is that when choosing a photo, you need a photo that doesn't have much glare on the windows as well. Because what can happen is when you are lightening these up, it'll almost give that white um, look to it and therefore it doesn't look realistic at all and you don't get those interior contours on the interior bits or even what's showing through on the background, say when you are looking through the side windows here and you do have the windshield, you'll see some of the background image as well. Now with this particular version of Photoshop I'm using here, it is CS5 and I'm using it on a Mac, but this is also the same for a PC as well. And this applies to newer versions of Photoshop as well as previous versions. Now first we're gonna start by doing here is you wanna use your polygonal lasso tool. And you just wanna go around here and you want to cut the windows out separately from the rest of the photo. As you can see there, so we do go ahead, remove this. Now, if you're working with a Mac, it's Command-C. If you're working with a uh, Windows version of this, it's just Control-C. Now, that's basically just to copy this selected area here. Once we've copied that selected area there, we can then go ahead and unselect the area. Then going either Command-V for a Mac or it's Control-V for a Windows application. We'll just paste it and you can see we do have this. So next what we'll do is just want to line it up there just to ensure it is in the proper location. Uh, sometimes it depends on your operating system. It may put it in the exact same locations. Other times it may move it around a little bit. So once I remove the background here, you see we'll be left with something that looks like this. So again, we'll zoom in just a little bit here. And what we'll want to do then is we'll cut all the existing uh, areas around the glass using the polygonal lasso tool again. Just simply go around like so. Now with different vehicles, you may have different molding that does go around the window. So obviously when cutting this out, you'll want to go according to what your vehicle is. So we'll just cut out this area here. So again, we've closed in this area. Now, just to remove this area, we'll just go ahead and hit delete. It's both the same for Windows and Mac applications. Unselect that area. You can see we already have some of it cut out there. Now, I didn't really take too much time in there, but just giving you an example of how it, to go about it. Then once we're done, we should have something that looks like this. Now, in some situations, which I do find, I do have this on one layer. It automatically puts it on one layer. What can happen is if you do have, say, a darker tint maybe on the secondary window here as opposed to the first window, then you may need to put that on a different layer in order to get that proper effect where it does look realistic. So next, putting this back in location here, as you can see, we do have the background. So what we'll do next is we'll double click on the layer. We'll go all the way down to color overlay here. We'll select that, go into the properties here and we'll go to white. Next, what we'll do here is we'll go all the way down. We want to open up this blend mode, drop down menu, and go all the way down to hard mix. Now you can see it doesn't do too much right now, but watch. Now once I lighten it up here, we're looking for roughly about this area here. I do find that depending on the window tint and depending how the photo is taken, anywhere under 50% does work quite well. Uh, with this particular vehicle here, we're probably looking around between 25% to 35%. percent Let's try 25%. As you can see, it does lighten it up. We'll go 35%. It might make it too white. Yeah, it does make it too white. It doesn't look as realistic. So let's say we'll just go with something in the middle. Pick 30%. Now, just to give you a difference here, what it does look like with the normal view, you can see it does make it somewhat hazy looking and it kind of gives a look of a different style of tint. So obviously we don't want that. So back to hard mix, click OK. And we most likely can leave it right there if you're quite satisfied with that. As you can see, it does lighten up some of the backgrounds uh, which would look through the windows and you can see it does lighten up the interior as well. 
But if we want to take this an extra step further, we can go down to image, whoops, image adjustments and brightness and contrast. Now with the brightness here, we can adjust it a little bit as well. It's not necessarily needed, I find. You can see it does make it a little bit brighter. Obviously, we'll want to go with a lower value, uh, possibly something uh, up to five at maximum. But what we're looking for here is contrast. So you can see when we do change the contrast here, we kind of get those black areas in the inside here. We darken them up so it does make it look more realistic. So there is a difference between the lighter areas and the darker areas. Now, even with the brightness here, we can actually take it back maybe just a little bit there. As you can see, it does bring it back some. So say we just want to go with uh, minus two. You can see it does bring it up a little bit and click OK. Now I'm just taking a moment here to separate the two windows. You can see here I have the one that goes on the side and I have the one that goes on the rear. Now they are both on separate layers, so I do have separate adjustment for each of those. Now another step which you can also take here is we can go and depending on your photo here, you can adjust the uh, vibrance of the colors. And what this in turn does, this will affect of how the colors are shown through on the opposite windows which do shine through. So going up here to image adjustments, go to vibrance, and we do have vibrance and saturation. Obviously when we do adjust these values, you can see we're working with the side window here. You can see it does go more blue, or then you can take the color out of it. Now obviously it does depend what colors are prominent in the window of what will start to pop up more. Now the same goes for saturation as well. As you can see, we can take it out, or then we can add more. Now obviously you want to choose what is uh, best, what goes according to the photo you are working with. So this concludes the rest of my tour video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.